If you're a Star Wars fan, you have had a terrible time if you like good entertainment. Luke Skywalker utterly dismissed the original trilogy, well, in shambles. Stories retconned and characters brought in who are simply self-inserts of Kathleen Kennedy. And now, perhaps folks, we are ready to tell you that change is coming. And we have the data, we have the information, we have the scoops. We're not here to tell you that Star Wars will be fixed. We're here to tell you that Disney is ready to try to fix what they know they broke. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of every age, background, creed. You are welcome here on the channel that explains entertainment keeps you ahead of the culture curve. Joining us today, Lauren Connor, LW Ghost, and Jonas J. Campbell. Welcome to all, and let's get started. All right, we are diving in, first of all, folks, to the trailer that just came out. No, it's not the Acolyte trailer, because we are, uh, we've watched as that is getting now... Uh, ratioed into the dust uh just like mufasa <laughs> but i want to show you this first so this is the may the fourth star wars trailer or video that came out from the star wars account Twenty four thousand likes to 1.2 thousand dislikes now again the acolyte trailer is getting the absolute uh, total opposite so why is this one popular what is it that's making this be uh you know 12 times more uh, likes or 24 times more likes than dislikes. Well, the only reference we have at all to the sequel trilogy, the Disney stuff, is a Kylo Ren reference that is over in a moment. Everything else, and by the way, folks, I'm here to tell you, we reported to you that Luke Skywalker is going to be coming back to Star Wars in a big way. There's a reason that they have Mark Hamill ready to go. Mark Hamill doesn't do this for free. There's a reason that Mark Hamill's in this trailer. I'm, I'm just telling you that. I'm not going to go any farther on it. But, the, but everything here is essentially either their Disney Plus stuff or it's original Star Wars. And that's it. And, and you have the 24,000 likes to 1.2 thousand dislikes. Again, Disney Plus stuff or original trilogy. That's all this is. There that's is, not the only thing that's happening. Go ahead, I Jones. do feel the need to point out there is one singular shot of Kylo Ren before he takes off his helmet from probably Force Awakens. Okay, so it yes. Is just a brief moment, and that's the entire thing you get. No main hero from from Disney Star Wars. Sorry, the spin-off trilogy. Uh, just one shot of Kylo Ren, which uh, maybe they didn't quite stick the landing on that iconic Darth Vader they were going for there. Right, and I know that many people out there, they've lost complete and total hope for Star Wars to ever be redeemed, we're not here to tell you that Disney knows how to fix this. We're here to tell you that based on conversations we've had with folks who know what they're talking about from inside the company, they know they broke it and they know they've got to fix it. This is a press release out of the Disney company. It says Star Wars The Phantom Menace is still a box office force making $14.5 million globally this weekend. After 25 years, the force is still strong with Phantom Menace. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace made an estimated $14.5 million at the global box office this weekend. An impressive total for a re-release of a film that is a quarter century old. The film, which released on Friday in celebration of its 25th anniversary and timed to May the 4th, also known as Star Wars Day, made $8.1 million domestically, which help, helped it take the number two spot at the box office. It was shown in 2,700 domestic theaters. You get the idea. Now, folks, we're here to tell you that Return of the Jedi, which is mentioned here, uh, opened to $5.1 million last year in April. If you go look at the per-screen average, Return of the Jedi actually beat uh, uh, The Phantom Menace. Now, what happened here is that Disney and theater owners looked at Return of the Jedi and said, oh, there's there's some money to be made here. We're going to open this much more bigly, right? <laughs> We're going to open this to m many more theaters uh, with The Phantom Menace. And so that's how it was able to make so much more money. Return of the Jedi had essentially no marketing, very limited release. So that's, that's what's going on. But this is not, guys, this is not Disney. This is not... So you look at the at the trailer for May the fourth. It's getting all kinds of um, you know likes. It's essentially not Disney. You look at this uh, press release. Essentially not Disney. Disney could release the Force Awakens. And they make three hundred thousand. They could re release the Last Jedi. And I'm not sure it would make one hundred and fifty thousand. So Disney knows that they're stuck in a situation. And Jonas, you've got some info on uh, Fortnite, which also connects with things we need to tell the audience. So could you bring up the Fortnite information this time? 
Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, I don't know how many of you are aware of this game. It is uh, Disney's big investment into the metaverse. Uh, and when I say that, this is a separate company from Disney on some level. They announced that they were doing a $1.5 billion investment in Epic Games, the makers of Fortnite. Uh, in, in our estimation, this is going to be the first name in metaverse because it is one that gets people in at a very young age. Uh, building up a, a a locker full of digital skins and things like that. And anyways, uh, Bob Iger made a whole big splash about how they were going to be incorporating their IP into Fortnite. And uh, this year for the May the 4th event, they announced this huge collaboration. If you look at here, uh, let's see, what do we have here? We have uh, Chewbacca. We have uh, Peely. This is not a Star Wars character for those of you who aren't following Disney Star Wars, but <laughs> he's in a uh, Lego. He's in a Lego version of uh, Fortnite that incorporates, uh, I'm going to say probably original trilogy, prequel trilogy, trilogy ish stuff. Obviously uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, Colt 45 spokesman over here, uh, Lando Calrissian holding, I want to say that's Max Rebo's uh, keytar there or their version of it. And right here, this is the closest we get to Disney Star Wars here. It's the Mandalorian best car bundle. Uh, Which, <laughs> if you just look at it, you'd have no idea what it is. Right. I mean, you it's been might kind of relegated. Tell. You would, you would yeah. think it was either Kit or Mad Max. Correct. Yeah, th there's a tiny little Boba Fett symbol on there. But the, the thing I want to point out, and I scoured this here because uh, I, I like Fortnite. I think it's a, lo a lot of fun here. If you look at, look over this, you don't see any sequel trilogy uh, stuff. You might see some hints. This guy right here is Disney Star Wars technically because uh, he came out of Rebels. Uh, Chewbacca, obviously original trilogy character, bowcasters. If you want a lightsaber pickaxe, that's not going to happen, by the way. Um, a back now, Jonas, as you scroll through this, let me explain to folks out there why this is so important, because you might say, well, this is just epic, understanding that the Disney stuff isn't popular and they want to make money. There's a much bigger story to this, and we need to share it with the audience. Yeah. So, folks, if, you, if you're still watching, this is, this is good stuff. Um, what we so have been told by some insiders at Disney is that when Disney made this massive, uh, more than a billion dollar investment into Epic, games which makes Fortnite. that what happened is that disney essentially took everything and we're, we're in rumor territory here because we can't corroborate this we have to trust our sources but disney took essentially everyone who was involved in game making still at the company and they moved 90 percent of them in to go collaborate with epic and this is the first thing that has been born out of that and what we're told is that there was about 10 percent of those who worked on any kind of interactive gaming kind of stuff with Disney, that they didn't make that move over. They were actually folded into uh, the consumer products digital side of things. So this is literally Disney and Epic sitting down together for their first big collab. And this is what we're getting. And it suggests to me that what we've reported in the last three or four weeks, that Disney is making the pivot. I, I think it's. I think the proof is here now. But I want to bring in Lauren and, and, and Lou to talk about this. Can I... Um, can guys, I can Go I ahead, point Jonathan. out just one thing before you do that? Please, please. This is the only piece of sequel trilogy merchandise that you can pick up in the game. It's it's free, by the way. It's but it's from a super obscure quest line in a part of Fortnite that most people are not going into. Not the battle royale version. If you go into the music version, you can get this: the seven string Halleck set, which. As Disney and Star Wars converge, most people would recognize this as a Galactic Star Cruiser uh, item. This apparently was in the background of Force Awakens, probably in the cantina scene. This is the only piece of sequel trilogy merchandise in Fortnite this year, and and they literally can't give it away. It's it's uh, it's an obscure quest line that almost no one is going to get or even see it on screen. So huh. Lou and Lauren, let me let me toss it to you this way. What we're hearing out of Disney is that they don't view Star Wars as sequel trilogy, prequel trilogy, original. That's not how they view things. Now, they do in terms of uh, the various branches of their franchise. But in terms of, of vision for what Star Wars should be, Disney right now sees that they're no longer a boy brand. And that's probably based on feedback from their licensing partners. And... What Disney sees as their problem is not sequel trilogy. What Disney sees as their problem is they must return to boy brand. Now, I'm not saying that they know how to do that. 
I'm not saying that Kathleen Kennedy is going to be the one or not be the one to do it. I'm just telling you that somewhere in the C-suite, we now believe that the switch has been turned, that they realize that they eradicated the boys and that they're going to do whatever it takes to bring the boys back. Now, can they do that well? I don't know, but I want to get your take on what we've seen so far. And do you do you feel that same shift? We're still in Inspector Clouseau territory. <clears throat> I mean, this, this is ridiculous. You're, te you're telling me, okay, that they realize that they've, they've got a problem with boys. We've only been telling them that for almost, you know, 12 years now. This is not a revelation, and I don't buy that they're suddenly waking up to this. Everybody has been shouting to them about this. My my guess is that they're probably mostly getting this from their licensees and, and from the investors. But the problem is that they bought Star Wars because they wanted a boy brand, because their their theory at the time, along with, with Marvel, was that, well, we've locked up the girl market. Uh there's 50% of the audience out there we're not reaching. Let's buy some boy brands so that we can capture the entire market. And then they promptly went to trying to switch them over to girl brands because A, that's what they know how to do, and B, that's what their agenda is. So even if they're now, I'm not saying become aware of the fact that this is what they've done, they're acknowledging tacitly that this is where they've goofed. You've still got to deal with the people in the company that have the agenda. And... You can right, tell right. them you, you can tell them we're going to do something different. My guess is that they're going to have little mini internal revolts about that. So good luck. Well, you a chance, you, you're you right, Warren. You're right, and and so the original pitch that Kathleen Kennedy did, and, and we've listen, we've talked to people who they are intimately aware of this, is that they were told, hey, we're getting a boy brand. Get ready, we're going to market this. You know, we're going to we're going to make toys, boy brand, boy brand, boy brand. We're going to make tons of money off this. And then Kathleen Kennedy pitches, hey, we can actually get both boys and girls. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to insert a girl into the Luke Skywalker role. And the girls will love it. But the boys still love Star Wars because they're always going to love Star Wars. And that has utterly failed. The Kathleen Kennedy vision is over. But I want to show people this. This is what we're talking about. Take, take a look at this in comparison. Just like the Mufasa trailer, the Acolyte official trailer is being ratioed now. Negative. And uh, by the way, the likes have stayed about where they are for the past 12 hours. The dislikes continue to rise. I suspect this is going to be a two to one by the time it's over in terms of dislikes to likes. And there's just nothing much here to like in the Acolyte trailer. It's 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 just kind of generic Star Wars wrapped in the new uh, woke kind of uh, vision. But, you know, there's even a part where they throw little daggers at a Jedi. And instead of the Jedi using the force to stop the daggers, you know, use a lightsaber. And it's like, well... <laughs> You know, okay, I guess maybe you don't get Star Wars all that well, but it, it looks cool. So, uh, Jonas, do you have, can you pull up on the Fortnite side? Can you pull up what the, the big item is, what everybody's trying to get? And, Lou, I want to get your take on what you think is going on with the investors here with sure. Star Wars as Jonas gets that ready to go. Uh, which one are we talking about? Are we talking about the car bundle or are we talking about Chewbacca? Oh, we are, no, no, no. Nobody wants that. They, they want Dagobah, Jonas. Go ahead, Lou. Well, first of all, when you talk about, hey, we'll get the girls and the boys will come anyway because it's Star Wars, doesn't that sound awfully familiar to Disney's overall general, we can do whatever we want and because we're Disney, they'll come back to us anyway attitude? Does to me. Secondly, I have to think that this is coming from the money people. I think that some of these major investors, and certainly, as you said, the retail people, came to them and said, look, we stuck with you, and we pushed this Peltz guy out of the picture for a while, but he's going to come back if you don't change things. And if you don't, we may not be able to stick with you the next time. So I, I suspect there was a semi-ultimatum. Now, whether they can pull it off is another story. It's interesting to note when you looked at that Fortnite stuff, uh, the Lego stuff. Remember that the size of Lego's buy-in to Epic Games was exactly the same as the price that Disney paid. Actually, and a little the, bit more. About. Well, but but in the same realm, and both of them are very very minor partners compared to the the, the owner and uh, who's the big company involved? Uh, is it Vivendi or anyway? Uh, Disney has as much actually. Well, <laughs> Disney has more in their minority stake in the Chinese parks than they do in Fortnite. So right. 
<laughs> no, those are those are great points. But- and when you and when you and when you say, well, they sent all their gaming people. You say, what gaming people are left after they killed Lucas and they killed all the other things they were doing? Uh, well, I, I want to say, and, and it's to the point where we wonder where did all that metaverse staff go after uh, Bob Iger came in and and canned that entire department because it was probably too chapek. Hmm. We're we're dancing near something that metaverse go. That's right. We're dancing near big news, I think. But uh, Jonas, uh, we haven't seen Luke Skywalker very much in any kind of promotional, you know, materials or anything outside of those appearances in Disney Plus. Wasn't he very visible just this past week with Joby Wan Kenobi? Oh my! (laughs) Mark Hamill is uh, he's making things difficult for Disney, maybe. Although they probably like it. But Jonas, this is what we have. this is what we have over on Fortnite right now. This is the one that so many people want. And again, a collab between Disney and Fortnite brings us Dagobah Luke with Yoda. There's no Ray. There's no new Ray skins here. There's no new Kylo Ren skins here. There's no Captain Phasma. There's like there's no BB-8s. It's it's Luke with Yoda and this is what everybody wants in this little multi-season 3 week or uh, mini season 3 week uh pass and quests and all of that. Uh, Jonas, do you see that this, because when I look at this, what I see is Disney always chooses the characters they want to highlight based on what will further their future products. Do you think this this is yet another sign of Luke returning? I I totally agree. Uh, This is Luke in Empire Strikes Back. And by the way, Fall Guys also owned by Epic. So in some way, Disney owns a little piece of that one as well. Um, That one is also an Empire Strikes Back focus. Uh, the closest that I've come to uh, to seeing anything sequel trilogy here, obviously that little guitar, which no one is going to recognize that unless you are a super, super nitpicky fan. Or there's a BB-8 skin over in Rocket League, uh, and, and that's about it. And that doesn't even cross-promote. This, to me, is, is Luke Skywalker on Dagobah. Probably they wanted to figure out a way to put Yoda in the game, and then they they reverse engineered from there because Luke was already in the game. It's Return of the Jedi and uh, and uh, so I almost said a New Hope and Star Wars uh, Luke Skywalker there that have already been in the item shop. You never see anybody playing as Rey. Sometimes you'll see somebody playing as Kylo Ren. I never in my life have seen anybody playing as Finn. Uh, they don't even have Poe Dameron. They are not devoted to the sequel trilogy in any way. And everybody's going after these new Star Wars skins that are actually the old Star Wars skins in the game. So I I think we've reached the point where Disney, in spite of everything that Kathleen Kennedy has attempted, that they're realizing, hey, it's like owning the Batman franchise and not using Batman. We got to stop. You know, this is, this is, they have been running Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League now for 10 years. And it's not working. It's never going to work. And I think that they're having to jettison that we have some more stuff, folks. We've got what? some more stuff that we can't talk about publicly yet that is causing us to say the things we're saying about we think they're done. We think they want to move away from the sequel trilogy. I, I, I don't I'm know curious. that they'll drop it, but go ahead, Lou. What is the uh, demographic of the average Fortnite person? Is oh, gosh, there's so many players. Or, or, be, well, it, it, all it spans. I'm, well, what I'm saying is do the young people who've only seen the sequel, sequel, sequels even know or care? Or is this playing on people our age and a little that, bit younger? Okay, that's a fantastic point, Lou, because Fortnite is the <laughs> biggest game on the planet. Um, that's a great question because if if they have decided, and they've got great actuaries who figure this stuff out, if they have decided that the original trilogy sells to every demographic better than the sequel trilogy, then that says that the sequel trilogy didn't stick with the young, with the uh, newest generations that were supposed to like it. That's well, a fantastic point. It also says that the the young people that were supposed to like the new stuff might have liked it because that's all they had. But it says rather than just a question of what do people prefer, the older people are absolutely never in a million years going to buy into the new stuff because they hate it. You know, uh, it's all well and good to talk about what people like, but people reject what they hate. And it becomes part of the general message of, well, they ruined Star Wars. It's worth so pointing Jonas- out that Bob Iger did say on an earnings call that this Fortnite play, this Epic Games play, is specifically to get at the at the younger audience. So there has to be demographic data that backs that up, even though we know plenty of people in their 20s, 30s, 40s that play Fortnite. 
So there are going to be a lot of people who say, well, what about the Acolyte? What about, uh, you know, the Ray movie and all of this stuff? And, and we're here to tell you that there's stuff going on in the background that we can't talk about yet. But I, th I think that they're going to flush that stuff out. And then I think they're going to return to the original Star Wars kind of George Lucas stuff. But I don't know that they can execute on it because I think that they have sort of executed their ability to make good entertainment by removing so much of their creative staff. I think they're going to try to fix a tremendous amount of things with the Mandalorian movie. I don't know that they'll be successful. Um, Jonas, is it safe to say that we're following up on a big story that we might be able to bring out soon on the Ray movie? Uh, which one? And yes, yes, absolutely. But we're not going to go any further, folks. That, that's all we're going to give. Now, I want to end with Lauren, though. Lauren, I want to give you the last word because we're presenting a lot of stuff. And some of the stuff that we're talking about, we really can't say who's telling us this and exactly what it is they're saying. With the Ray movie, we can't yet tell what, what it is we think we know. Lauren, Star Wars has been absolutely just the living daylights beaten out of it in terms of it being a franchise. I mean, they have just utterly destroyed it. If there is a hard reset of some kind in the future, do you think that fans can forgive Disney? And if not, what would it take for fans to return? What would Disney have to do? And I don't think Bob Iger's above groveling at this point because I, I really think some of the stuff we've heard, there, there is a panic in Disney about Star Wars now. And it's because Marvel is no longer able to be their boy brand. Because they killed Marvel too, so now now the panic has set in. So what what does Bob Iger have to do to convince fans to give give them one more chance? Oh, they have to debase themselves. Heads, <laughs> heads need to lower. That's like that's that's <clears throat> not so hard for them. I, they do that every day in one way or I, another. <laughs> I, I don't think that we'll accept less than some personal humiliation at this point. It's like you're telling me that they've decided they need to pivot. Well, it's obvious. That's been obvious for years. And the fact that they're doing it now and they're they're hoping we're just going to forget this, I don't think that flies. And the only way that you're going to get anywhere nearer to back where you want to be is consistently good product. And I don't trust them at this point that once they start, if they get a little bit of a bump, I don't trust them to not try and pull this crap again. So heads need to roll. That's the only way this works. You've got to publicly humiliate some of the people that were involved in this. And then you need to get people in who actually care and can produce some good product. Frankly, I, I don't think they can do it. I, 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 think I think that second part is the hard part for them because they've so turned off the people who are dedicated to it. If they go to them and say, oh, no, please come back. Please, please, please. We're really going to do it. Yeah. That's what you told me last time, and it didn't happen. So Look, it, I, it's I, getting I, the, getting rid of the old people. Yes, that's wonderfully debasing and all of that. But getting new people who understand this thing the way that you do, the way that true fans of it do, I don't think there's any of them left who are willing to trust them to come back. Well, let me explain it to you this way. It's like sure. I have been so turned off of Star Wars that it's like I haven't watched anything. I haven't read anything. I It's become thoroughly demoralizing to me. After Ahsoka, like, right? I, I, I don't even like talking about it anymore. And so it, it's it's almost an irritation having to come on and, and talk about these things now. <clears throat> but this last week, my son on his Steam Deck got X-Wing set up and running. And that was my go-to game. That, that, that was the one that I was heavily obsessed over and still am to this day. And I got real excited about it. So I got it working on mine. I set up control schemes. I got TIE Fighter going. And then I pulled out a bunch of old X-Wing comics and I started reading a bunch of that stuff. And it was good. And it had the right Luke Skywalker that was in some of those early issues. And it got me to thinking about, well, this is that they made a point about mentioning how he is the hope of the rebellion. And that is the one thing that Disney got right in Rogue One was saying that rebellions are built on hope, but they've poisoned that word now because they keep dangling it in front of us saying, look, we're really going to change this time, baby. It's like, I don't want to hear it. I, I don't want to hear about hope. I don't, I don't want to hear you talking about it. Shut up and do something and then keep doing it and do it right. If you're not going to do that, don't bother. Well, I've got a, I've got a bit of bad news <clears throat> or at least a bad opinion, I think. Not a bad opinion, but I think we're in the stage now in the relationship between Disney and sort of abused fan base where Disney's like, okay, we, you know, we have a problem, but I don't think they're really willing yet to do what you're suggesting, Lauren, which is say, 
mega mea culpa, right? And I think, but I, I think they realize they have a problem because they're getting ratioed and because the license, you know, licensees don't want to deal with Star Wars anymore because it's unpopular. I, You've got this happening with the Kathleen Kennedy vision. Meanwhile, Fortnite is making bukus of money off of original Luke. So, you know, the, the, the stark contrast could not be more. And I think that if Favreau brings in a heroic Luke Skywalker into the Mandalorian movie, he's going to put the entire company on notice that this is the way that they should have been doing the franchise the entire time. And There's money talks. If the what? Mandalorian and Grogu movie starts with, no, this will begin to set things right. That'll be really telling. Lauren, your thought? There's one more point that I would make, which is that something that was, in my mind, remarkable that happened this weekend was the whole Helldivers fiasco. And oh, yes. the community spoke very loudly with one voice and forced Sony to backpedal. And I think the same kind of treatment needs to happen here with Disney and Lucasfilm. It's been happening, but I think we need to, to get even more vocal about it and say, no, you're going to change or we will kill this. At this point, I would rather see Star Wars dead than see them continue to do what they're doing. And you could argue it already is, but I mean dead in such a way that it cannot be resurrected. I would, I, I'm at the point where I would rather burn it to the ground than see them continue to desecrate it. And, you know, and of course, Lorne is speaking metaphorically, folks. He's not literally no, going yes. to go to. We Lucasville. don't give financial advice, anything about killing people, or anything about World War II leaders. <laughs> Those are all no nos no. on this channel. <laughs> now, listen, listen, guys. When you talked about, oh no, honest, please, we really are going to change. Doesn't that remind you of every addict you've ever heard? Yes. I happen. I happened yesterday to be watching the wonderful British series Cracker with Robbie Coltrane, who most of you know as Hagrid. And he drinks and he smokes and he gambles and his wife leaves him and every all of his friends. And he's talking to somebody about it. And they say, well, you drink too much. Yes. And you smoke too much. Yes. And you, you know, gamble all your money away. Yes. Why? Because I like them. That's <laughs> Disney. They like this stuff they've been doing. They think we're wrong for not liking it like they do. You know, everybody's out of step. But Johnny is the old expression. Uh, and that's the problem. That's the well, problem. And the problem may be solved very soon if uh, the Kathleen Kennedy vision is truly coming into an end. The Acolyte trailer ratioed the original trilogy still going strong. And don't forget about The Phantom Menace. Everything George did, minus his promotion of uh, Bob Iger, seemingly going well. All right, folks, that's it for today. But more is on the way. We have the Week of Leaks on the Disney World Resort. We have all kinds of information coming up this week that will tell you what's coming with the theme parks. Get ready for it. This afternoon, we are breaking huge news on Tiana's Bayou Adventure. You don't have to be a shill. We will bring you the early previews you'll find nowhere else. Exclusives on the way. Like, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms, it's the notification bell, and drop a comment down below. And folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun. Clickbait. Fraud. Drama queen. Ugh. I wish there was a channel that was five to six minute news reads without the drama, frauds, and clickbait that could accurately let me know the current news providing my crucial context utilizing all the different That Park Place contributors and creators. Well, stupid. <laughs> huh? There is. It's the That Park Place YouTube channel, which will be going live real soon, so make sure you're subscribed so you can really stick it to the algorithms. You're joking. Nope. Ah! Uh...